Hi there, Leo. Welcome to your December 2017 Astro Update. It's Raina here. And in December, what are the trends for Leo? Lots of activity in that house of love. Now, that's swell because uh, some people are looking for love, obviously. But it's not just love. It's also children, including conceiving children, if that's your thing. It can be, I was going to say, it can be recreational sex, if that's your thing. But it can be creative projects. It can be your home business. And it can be parties. And you rule that house in the universal chart. So it becomes more uh, of a serendipitous thing or good juju, whatever you want to call it, for you to have all this activity there in December. Uh, Leo. But part of this activity is going to be a Mercury retrograde. So if you have had any relationship that has kind of gone a wall on the rocks, you may hear from that person again. Likewise, you may be dating somebody and you have some kind of communication breakdown and, uh, it's uh, off during some of this holiday season and you reunite just in time for Christmas. So it could be something along those lines. And of course, it could deal with a home business. Maybe there's some kind of snafus, uh, anything regarding contracts are not uh, indicated during Mer Mercury retrograde. So anything with your home business, obviously you call the shots. So don't... Uh, just go by this, go by your intuition, first and foremost, and the necessity of something for God's sakes. Because if something is meant, if, if, if you have a contract to sign and you say, no, I can't sign it because it's Merc Mercury retrograde, they might say, well, then you don't get to, um, you don't get to have us, um, sponsor your company. And, and so <laughs> that would be incredibly idiotic. Um, because it's like, oh, thank God I didn't get screwed up during ret Mercury retrograde. Wait, what? I just lost a contract. So it's all, um, relatively speaking, obviously. And I'm not saying that any of you guys would be stupid because Leos are very astute, actually very good at business and being good leaders. So it, it's, I don't know if people really realize that as much as they should. So anyway, let's uh, get right into this. It's, it's great because as the month begins, the sun is in that fifth house. You're ruled by the sun. So it's like you're feeling like a Leo should feel. But what's even better is that Sagittarius is a sister fire sign. So there's that positive, uh, those positive vibes happening as well. And in the house that you rule, it's like you feel at home, you feel like yourself, and you feel romantic, and you feel full of creative ideas. Leo is an incredibly creative sign. Um, if a Leo person isn't a performer, they are likely some sort of artist, or you just are naturally creative. You love children and things like that. You know, having children is a creative thing too. And you're like a big kid. So the month begins with the sun in this house, your ruler, and then uh, Venus enters on the first. So Venus enters this sector that has to do with love. And Venus is the goddess of love and beauty. So you can see where this is going. This is an indicator that people that are looking for love may very well find it during this holiday season. And um, also this has to do with artistic pursuits. So that can be very good for that. But Venus can bring money with her. So it's all good, literally. On the same day that Mercury goes retrograde in the, in the fifth house, there's a full moon in Gemini in the opposite house the 11th house. And um, this is the house of hopes and wishes. So it is possible that some Leos are going to have their dreams come true. Um, 
when we talk about hopes and wishes, it's also called long range goals. And that sounds like a, a, a Capricorn version of hopes and wishes because it sounds much more business like. I like hopes and wishes because it reminds me of fairy tales. And um, being a Sagittarius, like Leo, a fire sign, I'm a big kid too. And I just enjoy that depiction of it. Um, the 11th house is also the house of friendships and other social contacts, like groups that you belong to and things like that. Full moons can bring endings, so there may be something that has to fall by the wayside. Maybe you've outgrown certain friendships. Uh, it isn't that there's anything wrong with these people, but simply that you don't feel a sense of being on the same page with them. You're going in a different direction. And actually, I think one of the greatest um, factors in success, and I'm not just talking about career success, but life success is understanding this point. And yes, it can be friendships, but it can also be, in some cases, even family members or other people that you normally would just associate with sometimes because it was a habit. But um, depending on the individual person, if they are a real negative drain on you, that can affect your life and your own aspirations. So sometimes we have to do this and it's not out of unkindness. And some sometimes the full moon in the 11th house can give you an idea, you know, it can be an aha moment of exactly what it is that you're striving for. You know, Leo, the 10th house is the house of career. What is different about the 10th house what separates the 10th from the 11th houses? Well, what is the difference between careers and hopes and wishes? Career matters are, to me, anchored in the material world, okay? You get a paycheck, you get a pat on the back, you get um, possible good reputation in exchange for your services. However, those aspirations, while they can be very gratifying, are not the end-all be-all of our existence. We may have uh, dreams involving where we would like to live, what kind of fun activities, as evidenced by the fifth house, would we like to engage in on a regular basis? Um, who do we want to be with? Um, these are our, our um, goals but we may not have a clear picture. The 11th house is the house of really envisioning your future that goes beyond just your career, okay? So just keep that in mind. And um, the fact that you have Mercury retrograde in the fifth house could directly relate to this because if there's somebody that you've been seeing and you've been wondering, how does this person fit into my life on a permanent basis, that full moon on the, on the same day as Mercury goes retrograde may shine a light on exactly what it is you're looking for in the long term, not just in the short term. Oh, this person is hot. Uh, they, you know, whatever, but something for the long haul. On the 9th of December, Mars goes into Scorpio, Yauza. So it has been in Libra, has been in your third house of communication and siblings. Um, for some of you during November, and uh, I don't know when Mars went into Libra, probably sometime in late October, I'm thinking. But all through November, you've had Mars in that third house. Um, it can be siblings um, and cousins and things like that. So people that, you know, relatives that are not your mother <laughs> or even I would just include the father in the fa fourth house too, your parents. So you may be um, sparring with them for some reason. 
fighting with your family. Uh, first starting with your siblings and then <laughs> on the ninth, bringing it out to the parents. So some kind of conflict, Mars can bring be conflict. It doesn't have to be this area of your life, though. It could simply be you being very aggressive on a soapbox. Um, or, well, not so much a soapbox, but just um, wanting to communicate your ideas in general. Maybe taking some training that is very involved, that kind of keeps you away from... Uh, everything for, um, for a bit. And then on the ninth, it goes into your fourth house of home and family. And as I said, this could be that there's some kind of disagreements with your mother specifically, but your parents, um, let me see, what is your eighth house? That would be Pisces, wouldn't it? Um, I don't know if there's any triggers. Um, well, uh, that's interesting. I did not, in well, that was for November. Actually, that's interesting because, on November 22nd, um, Neptune goes direct in Pisces in your eighth house of other people's money. And this could include inheritance issues. So there could be some kind of clarity coming into play. If you're uh, watching this or listening to this in November, this could be an inheritance issue. And then you're fighting with various family members in December over this. Maybe something came into your awareness that you didn't know that you were kept in the dark or half truths. Sometimes Neptune can indicate deception. And so you may discover something and you're like loaded for bear because it's like, you may feel like some people are pulling a fast one on you. Maybe they left you out of a will. And that's because I, in some families, you would think if you were to to be on the outside looking into a situation like that, you would make the natural assumption that the Leo person is the bad person, wouldn't you? But in some families that are very dysfunctional, most of the family members are all dysfunctional. So the person that is healthy or relatively healthy is the one that is the black sheep, okay? And so if you are in that position, Leo, do, you know, stand your ground don't, um, you know, make sure that you're not going to create more stress for yourself. Sometimes things are not worth it and it's better to walk away. Mars wants to fight till the end. Okay. And, you know, Mars is the God of war, so it's not going to back down, but it can be overly aggressive. And my, from my own personal experience with this kind of a thing, even if something is very unfair, and you feel hurt about a particular situation, if a family member left, and it might have been a very close family member, and they left more uh, to one person than they did to you, or maybe they left you out altogether, you can be philosophical about it and say, well, that was their wishes, and I honor their wishes. You may not agree with them, but you're not going to fight what they wanted. But of course, it's not that cut and dried sometimes. Sometimes it can be that the person you feel was coerced into doing it and yada, yada, they were manipulated. So um, it is it's it is um, a little bit involved at times. So anyhow, I just wanted to bring that up because I was thinking, hmm, I wonder why they're fighting so much. But it can be with um, Mars in the fourth house, um, that you are renovating your house, that you're, it's a tear down, um, that you're like, um, remodeling something. Mars can be that, that very, um, active element. And then you have a new moon in the sector on the 18th. So nine days later, and that again could be some kind of renovation project. And you feel like, Hey, I just, uh, I, I redecorate, and that's not redecorating. It's more like um, co construction work even. And you, you feel like you're doing something and making something new in your home. Maybe you're trying to sell your home and this is the uh, time when you get a buyer even. Um, as I said, this is still going to be during the Mercury retrograde. So if you do get a buyer, 
it would be foolish to say, could you please wait until afterwards unless you know for sure that they're not going to waver? Um, because sometimes opportunities present themselves and you have to take it. But if you can do this outside of a Mercury retrograde, it might go more smoothly. You know, it, it all depends on what you buy into. Uh, I was just thinking that astrology, if we really look at it in the big picture, we could say that it's uh, trying to cope with being in the matrix and that once you're outside of the matrix, all bets are off and you can do whatever you want, uh, you know, within a cer within certain reason, you know, not things that are immoral, but that you're not affected by this worldly karma anymore. So who knows? <laughs> it's an interesting theory. Uh, I don't want to get too far out though, because I do believe uh, in astrology as a tool. It's not a crutch though. Okay, so um, the very next day, Saturn goes into Capricorn. So can we link these two events, New Moon and Sag in a late degree in Capricorn, in uh, Saturn and Capricorn? By the way, the New Moon and Sag is very close to the galactic center. It's a 26, the uh, Sag, the galactic center is 27. So... Um, that in itself is noteworthy because Saturn has been very close to this point. It was actually at the beginning of the month, it was uh, conjoining and in conjunction with the galactic center. Um, and now it's a little bit far apart. It's probably still within orb of being conjunction when it goes into Saturn, uh, when it goes into Capricorn. But this could be, with that new moon, um, I should really emphasize, have emphasized this more in my readings because it really can be, a, you know, people talk about zero point. Um, you know, you can't get more zero point than a new moon, can you? It's a time to start over again. With you, it's fourth house matters. So it could even be about your past. If you have been fighting with family members, Leo, it's time to put that where it belongs in the past and start afresh uh, without the baggage of the memories of everything that has uh, been wrong uh, in your family of origin, in your childhood, and don't use that as an excuse anymore. Don't use that as a reason to not be happy. It's not going to apply for all Leos, for sure, because Leos tend to be very positive thinking. But, you know, um, compost happens, and people sometimes are very affected by their childhoods. Just because you're Leo doesn't mean you have a, a an amazing childhood. And actually, if a Leo has a crappy childhood, it can it can affect them more than it would another sign, like Capricorn, who might say, hey... You know, life's a bitch and then you die. That might be their philosophy where they're very cynical and they expect life to kick them in the groin, okay? But you are more innocent and idealistic. And so it can be more of a crushing blow if um, as a child things are um, pretty bad. So this is a time to reinvent yourself during this new moon in Sag. And then Saturn goes into Capricorn. It's going to be your sixth house, which is a great place for Saturn to enter, Leo, because the sixth house in the universal chart is an earth house um, ruled by the sign Virgo, and um, which, by the way, happens to be your second house of earned income. So Virgo um, is very comfortable with Cap Capricorn. Um and, and so is Saturn very comfortable with Capricorn because it rules Capricorn. So in the bigger picture, in the grand scheme of things, Saturn and Capricorn could be a great economic boon, uh, boon or boom for um, the world. And because I live in America, I'll just say America, uh, because we are a cancer nation, and a Capricorn is the opposite sign of Cancer. So there's a connection there with the cardinal signs. Okay, so um, 
So this can be a two and a half year period where you're able to establish a great work routine. I have a feeling that some of you are really interested in your own business. And the sixth house is very important for this, these matters because your, your daily routine becomes much more of a factor in whether you succeed, fail, or somewhere in between, or middling in between. And it's very easy, uh, speaking from experience here, uh, having been doing this for over two years now, that it's easy to kind of, it's, it's amazing how fast time flies during one day. So um, Saturn can get your butt into gear. It can also help with health. And it may show you through some kind of uh, restriction that it places on health or your work where there's a weak link. So be it's better to be proactive rather than wait around for Saturn to give you that lesson. Because it's not inevitable that it should happen if you're aware of astrology. That's the whole point of astrology is knowing ahead of time what to look out for. Saturn is all about discipline and organization. And uh, the sun goes into the sector a couple days after that. And um, by the way, with uh, Saturn in the sixth house, you have the opportunity to set something in motion for the next 30 years. So that's really um, awesome. Okay, that's what I have for you, Leo. I, I can't believe that this uh, reading is so long, but uh, hopefully some of you have stayed to the end of it. If you like uh, how I work and you wish to get a natal chart interpretation, which is looking, analyzing Leo, and this is your exact time of birth, so it's going to be totally different than this, much more involved with your own personal houses, your planets in different houses and stuff like that. And, um, your patterns, your strengths, you know, like your talents. If you've, if you're kind of like wondering which direction to go in life, I might give you something that really resonates with you and kind of validates your feelings. Um, and also gives you the highlights in different areas of your life, like love and career and, and money for the next 12 months. Um, just click on the link below. I have a special of 20% off of all of my readings, including my natal chart interpretations, which are an hour long. So check that out with the link below if you're interested. Otherwise, I wish you all the best in December, the last month of the year. Take care, you guys. Bye.